Welcome back to Maury's Music. My name's Maury Rutsch. And I'm Spoon Phillips. And we have a lot to talk about. What's going on today, Spoon? Well, um, today I am <clears throat> trying to get rid of the frog in the throat. Don't worry, nobody watches this stupid show. <laughs> today, I'm doing just fine and looking forward to another exciting podcast. Uh, this one with a little more focus than uh, than some of our previous podcasts. Can I ask you off the record, on the record, on the microphone, which alcohol is to blame for your frog? <laughs> no, I think this is actually due to the increased humidity. We've had some absolutely beautiful like Southern California weather recently, and then overnight the, uh, the humidity has descended upon us, and I was sleeping with the window open, so... So, um, okay, so you don't want to tell me. I, I got it. That's fine, too. Yeah. Let's start the show. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is scotch. <laughs> well, I have a lot of questions today because this topic always confuses our customers. And I'll be honest, sometimes it confuses me. We're going to talk about the various Martin neck shapes. And really, the only thing I'm going to contribute to this program is when we switch from one topic to the next topic, I'm going to say, next. <laughs> That's not true. You have your own opinions, and uh, and you you know you get to play all these different neck shapes. I think one of the interesting things about this is how the neck shapes evolved, and we're really going to focus on just the neck shapes that are currently available today on various Martin models. But they have moved around from different series over the years, so that's fascinating. And I think we're going to start today with the standard series and the current, what has become the default Martin neck, which goes by more than one name, but they officially dubbed it the high performance neck, uh, which is a nice sleek automotive design sounding name. And I know that Tim Teal, the head of instrument design, loves automotive design and draws a lot of inspiration from it. And the high performance neck is a combination of two features, a modified low oval neck shape and the high performance fingerboard taper. And a lot of people, uh, since uh, the standard series was all converted to this neck shape in 2018, and a few models were converted uh, in the two years prior the, to that, a lot of people are used to this now and are aware what this all means. But for those who don't, the high performance taper has a with that nut of one and three quarter inch and then at the 12th fret it's got a width of two and one eighth so that two and one eighth inch width at the 12th fret is the same width as their previous standard neck which had a one and eleven sixteenth inch width nut and so they made it a little wider down at the nut area where the wrist is at its most awkward and it's the farthest away from the body. And where you do those open chords, the open C and the open A and those kind of chords, where you're constantly twisting your wrist around. And this had become the industry standard long before Martin decided to go that route. Um, companies like Huss and Dalton and Taylor and um, many others had already gone with a one and three quarter inch neck that was really sleeker than the traditional uh, one and three quarter inch necks you would find on the Martin Vintage Series and Modern Deluxe Series and Authentic Series and those series that came out of the 1990s and the early 2000s. So they took the, uh, they took the temperature, as it were, of the Zeitgeist and decided to follow suit and widen the nut a little bit but keep the fretboard sleeker uh, up the frets. The string spacing goes along with it is um, is a compromise between the old two and a quarter that would go with the old one and three quarter inch necks and the two and one eighth that went with this more slender one and sixteenth inch necks. And I think, what is it? It's two and five thirty seconds. Is that what it measures out to these days? Yes, that's what it's at now. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, but yeah, it's, it is, uh, it's to try to please as many people as possible from finger pickers to flat pickers to strummers. So that's the high performance taper that appears on a great many models. Um, and they don't all have the same neck shape, but in the standard series, 
we have the modified low oval. And that neck shape dates back into the 1990s when Martin was trying to come up with something that was a little more modern and again kind of uh, trying to stay competitive in the market with guitar makers who had started basically putting electric guitar necks on acoustic guitars and Martin was very late coming to that. Their first attempt to do that was the low profile. That was one of the first things Chris Martin brought into Martin Guitar when he took over the company. Um, I'm a big fan of low profile. It's basically the one I played for a zillion years. And the modified low oval is, as it sounds, uh, they first came out with the low oval neck and then they modified it so it wasn't quite so ovaled. And this is now the standard shape. It began with the old Aura models for people who remember the models back then that ended in the word Aura that uh, were the first models to have Fishman's Aura technology. They were matched to the modified low oval and then moved into other series um, below the standard series like the 16 series and the original road series and so forth. And that then ultimately was chosen to become the Martin neck for the 21st century. So modified low oval matched with high performance taper gives us the high performance neck on the standard series. And what do you think the, uh, what's the customer feedback from your point of view about that now being the, the standard neck? It's really been very promising. Most customers that we speak with that take the time to tell me really, really do like it. And it's worth mentioning, maybe a couple of years ago, I was talking to a couple of people at Martin, including our custom shop rep, and they made a good point to say that when the majority of customers go to Martin through any local dealer to spec out their favorite custom shop guitar, when you do that, you get to pick everything about the instrument, including the neck carve. The modified low oval from the standard series is by far the most popular. So that basically tells Martin, if you let the customers decide which neck to use, that's the one to go with. And it's, it's been a home run as far as we can tell. That's an interesting way to put it because when they made that decision and I inquired about it, <clears throat> Tim Teal told me two things. But one of them was that they, the custom shop kept getting orders for other Martin models, but they, the customer wanted the modified low oval. And that was really the, the spark that said, well, wait a second, if people are willing to pay extra to get that on their D28 or their 0018V, then maybe we should just go ahead and put that on our regular guitars. And they did, and it's been very successful. I have to give a shout out to one Bill Peebles of uh, Loveland, Ohio, who uh, you got to meet at, <laughs> that you got to meet at Martin Fest. I uh, spoke with him last night um, and didn't really tell him why originally, uh, why I'd asked him about uh, now that he'd had his Triple O Twenty Eight for almost two years. Asked him about the neck, you know, and just casually asked him. Um, would you say you notice, you know, do you notice the neck when you're playing it? Do you have any, you know, is there, is there something you wish it didn't have? Is there something you wish it did have? And he, uh, he had nothing but very good things to say about it. And like the fact I led with you think about it because he doesn't think about it. It doesn't occur to him because everything is, is very easy for him. And, you know, he's somebody that has played his entire life and has some repetitive stress issues and things like that, and has had hand, hand injuries. And, and he's very happy with his short scale uh, modified low oval with the high performance taper. His previous guitar was an a, uh, Alvarez uh, that goes way back in his life. And when he compares them now, he said he's done this recently, and he said it's really quite noticeable how much more comfortable his Martin neck is. So I think that that says an awful lot. Yeah, it was great to meet him. And now that you say that after the fact, of course, we'd all love an opportunity to go back and redo some of that weekend, if not just to ask people more questions that you might have forgot. I wonder how many other guitars he got to play over the weekend and how they did compare. If he played everyone's guitar versus he only played his own and one other one, uh, I wonder how that would affect, you know, how he feels about his own, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I actually brought that up 
And he got to play a lot of vintage Martins, which he's never seen before. He's only heard about. And I made a point of, you know, bringing him around to certain ones. And, and I was very, uh, uh, you know, it's too bad that one of our founding uh, members, Matt Carter, couldn't be there with his spectacular 1935 triple 28 sunburst. But yeah. uh, Bill did get to play a, a really good triple 28 from 1940, as well as other uh, instruments similar in a long scale triple 28 from 1934 and so forth. And he really, you know, in all cases, he said they all, and he said every guitar he played there, every Martin he played there, uh, sounded wonderful and in their own way. But what he thought about mainly, the only negative thing he ever ran into was he didn't like the feel of the necks. And so he's definitely felt like the neck on his guitar felt better than, and guitars like that felt better than any of the older Martins with bigger necks or V-necks or or even the, you know, wider one and three quarter inch, uh, what they call the standard taper, which is still available at Martin, that still gives you one and three quarter inch at the nut and two and a quarter at the 12th fret. But yeah, he, he, he was quite adamant about that, about how much uh, he loved the sound of a lot of those, of all of those guitars, but rarely was, felt comfortable with the neck. Well, it's probably for the best he didn't bump into Matt Carter because he'd feel ripped off. I know Bill Peebles bought that uh, <laughs> OM28 on the used market and paid way more than Matt Carter paid for his. Triple, triple OM28. But yes, um, yes, oh. it was, uh, some people don't know, and I think it's, I think we're allowed to say, but but Mac found the guitar at a yard sale in New Jersey for $100. <laughs> and uh, Sunburst, 1935 Sunburst, and he... Uh, he did have to invest a, a I think almost two thousand dollars or maybe more to have it to have the Martin factory bring it back to to its glory, but it was totally worth it. And then we just shudder to think the offers that he's had for it. Um, the, <laughs> mo the, the most amazing part is he had given it to his son, and his son took it to college, and it was just sitting in his closet in his dorm room for years. Um, <laughs> and uh, before Mac, you know, found out how valuable it was. So Mac, we hope you're we hope you're doing well. And I heard you stop by on Saturday, but I'm sorry I didn't get to see you. And I uh, hope you know Same here. Hope you will see you at the next one. But yeah, so so I thought that was an interesting, you know, it was a one person uh, it was a one person poll and rather spontaneous, but uh, <laughs> but it was somebody that really, you know, really loves the new neck. Um, I my favorite uh, modified low oval is the is the uh, short scale neck, I think. Uh, that's my favorite. And definitely with the one and three quarter inch width nut. Um, back when they uh, back when they first came out with the modified oval and the modified low oval, I was one of those people who was like different is bad. So I really didn't give them a chance and stuck with my, my modified Vs and my uh, low profiles. So speaking of low profiles, the standard series until 2018 and, and they trickled in the, the change to what we now call the high performance neck in 2016 and 2017. Standard series had been a low profile since um, the 80s, I think. I don't remember the exact time it switched over. I think they introduced it maybe in 78 and then eventually it became the standard series neck. And that had the standard taper. So you had the 111 16 inch nut on the dreadnoughts you had a th uh, one and three quarter inch on the, and on the triple O's as well. And you had one and three quarter inch on the OMs and that had the, you know, the wider fretboard all the way up the neck. And uh, when they eventually brought out the 12 fretters again, they, uh, some of those guitars would go up into to one and seven eighths inch widths. And um, today, the only model that still has the low profile that is made with the full standard series or above construction is the OMJM, the John Mayer signature model, which actually is made with the, uh, with the modern uh, simple dovetail deck joint, but otherwise is very similar to the OM28 uh, other than its Engel Engelman top. But it has a 1 and 11, six, I mean, sorry, 1 and 11 16th inch width nut. So it's got the old dreadnought low profile neck on it. Since, since it's rare to find an OM that's got that skinny, you know, that skinny nut up there. So that's really the only model until you get down to uh, other models that still have the low profile from the 1980s is 
the Big 12 string in the X series. Um, so that's an unusual, you know, that's not a typical low profile. And the other not typical low profile is the uh, nylon string, the triple O C16 nylon. Uh, that also has uh, a low profile, but again, they call it a low profile, but it's you know designed to be more like a classical guitar. And then there is now the low profile velocity neck, which of course is not at all like the regular low profile. And where do we find a low profile velocity neck? Well, I know the answer, but let's give our listeners a moment to guess. Time's up. <laughs> the SC guitars have the low profile velocity. And I don't know if velocity seems like the right word to you, but it sure does to me because those necks are fast. Yeah, super fast. So yes, that neck is asymmetrical. So when you're down, where you're down playing your thumb fretted F chord, and the regular chords that you play down by the nut, there is more mass on the treble side of the neck. But by the time you get up into the high area where you're doing your leads up by the cutaway and above the cutaway, that has flipped. And so you have more meet up by your thumb to anchor onto and less meat or mass on the treble side where you are doing your fancy fingering. And it's so subtle that it just feels comfortable. And as you move your hand up the neck, it just stays nestled in that little arch you make with your hand when you're playing the guitar. So really a, a remarkable achievement um, when it comes to the low profile velocity neck. And that neck is now on multiple models. You know, it came out on the SC13E and now they have uh, the SC13E Special, they have the SC10E, and there'll be many more because they're very, very popular. And I like to, here's another shout out to our friend, Jim Kalika from Pennsylvania. Jim owns an SC13E and he brought it to Martin Fest. And I have to say, hearing that in the song circles, we forgot to mention that guitar in our Martin Fest podcast, but that, uh, I was very impressed with how well that projected and he was still playing it with the ultra light strings and all that and it really held its own with uh, with the uh, traditional martins in the song circles yeah right i mean at a party like that you think somebody bringing a thin guitar with 11s wouldn't even show up and that guitar certainly did so before we go uh, up into i mentioned the modern deluxe series before we go up into that we're going to go in the opposite direction because that high performance neck with the modified low oval and the high performance taper is also on the 16 series guitars and on the 17 series guitars. But when we go down into the 15 series guitars, you have a modified low oval, but you have the standard fretboard taper. So you have uh, some of the models in the 15 series have a 111 16th inch nut still and two and an eighth up at the 12th fret. And the everybody's favorite 12 fretter, the triple O 15 SM, which is not currently in the catalog, but is almost certainly going to come back, I think, with their new naming convention where they are adding 12 to the stamp to mean 12 fret instead of using the old S for a standard body size. So I, I can't imagine that guitar is gonna be gone for long. And that had a modified low oval with a one and three quarter inch width nut and two and a quarter up at the 12th fret. So it's the more the traditional one and three quarter inch width. And then when we get down into the road series and the road series, I mean, I get down, I mean, we're talking about acoustic electric guitars that are meant for touring musicians who get down on stage and want to <laughs> really crank it up. Then we get into the high performance taper on the fretboard, but with a different neck shape. And that's the performing artist neck shape. And the performing artist neck shape is named after the now retired Performing Artist Series. And the Performing Artist Series uh, was a revolutionary thing for Martin Guitar, for the conservative Martin Guitar. They show up at NAM one year with a whole new lineup of guitars that were specifically inspired by and made to compete with the Taylor Guitar Company. Because for the first time in history, the dreadnought stopped being the most purchased guitar body shape in the world and it had become the mini jumbo that uh, 
small Luthers like Ryan and and uh, Olson and those guys had been uh, been putting out for years, and then Bob Taylor really popularized it with his size 14. And so, and but it also had the new Aura F1 series that was made to, to compete with Taylor's expression system, and and it had a neck that was designed to appeal to people who uh, buy Taylor's and like Taylor's uh, neck feel. And again, Bob Taylor was the first person who had the first genius to think up putting an electric guitar neck on an acoustic guitar for all the people who grew up playing electric guitars and of course made a fortune in the, in the process. And so that was really Martin's head to head and they came out with their grand performance body shape, uh, GPC, grand performance of the cutaway. That was definitely what the Performing Artist Series was all about and the new neck shape. And when they realized the GPC was really taking off, they decided to absorb that into their normal series and they slowly retired the Performing Artist Series. And the Performing Artist neck has stayed with us in the Road Series and the X Series. And frankly, I like it. And I think I prefer it over the modified low oval personally. I really liked that uh, neck shape and I really wished I could have gotten that NAM special. They made a GPC 42 NAM special uh, that we have Madagascar Rosewood, um, Ford shifted GE bracing, uh, Adir you know, Adirondack top, and uh, David Crosby has one, and they didn't make very many of them, and I would really love to have one of those. I really love the necks on those. But the reason they did not do that was Tim Teal, who had come up with the modified low oval with the help of other people, really wanted the standard series neck to be something that was uh, homegrown, invented and developed at Martin and uh, where the performing artist was clearly their version of the neck shapes that were out there on other guitars like Jim Olson's guitars and, and uh, Bob Taylor's guitars. So that's why they, you know, I believe that's why they did not bring the performing artist neck into the standard series. Uh, in Tim's mind, the performing artist neck is an electric guitar shape neck and the modified low oval is an acoustic guitar shaped neck. And so that has now become the Martin neck. But those Road Series guitars, awfully comfortable. Um, all of them electric uh, acoustic guitars, great bang for the buck, as we've said many times, and get down into the X series with their high pressure laminates, even greater bang for the buck. Um, but also the, uh, the performing artist uh, neck shape still with us. We did really, really well with the performing artist guitars, and a good friend of ours and sometimes bandmate Sean McFadden's got a really nice GPC PA4 Rosewood, but you can go up and down in that series from the PA5 all the way up to the PA1, and I really remember those being very comfortable, a little bit modern for some Martin players, but really, really a good value, and they sounded awesome plugged in. Oh, yeah. Yes, they definitely, and even down in the forest, like you said, that was a that was a. a economically best bang for the buck kind of guitar. You had to get up into the level one and, and level two, they only made one model or two models in, in the level two, but to get up into the Aura F sound stuff. But, um, and you know, and Martin continues to improve the Aura system. And right now you can only get the super fancy one on the Modern Deluxe series. And I know this is about next, but but it's interesting how, as you've come up through the necks, also how the sound systems and what's available changes. And the modern deluxe is a certainly modern and deluxe, modern with all that amazing uh, futuristic technology like the liquid metal bridge pins and the carbon fiber bridge plates and titanium alloy necks rod and all that stuff. But it's also inspired by vintage Martin stuff. And, you know, the, the looks are kind of uh, based on pre-war Martins. And they have VTS tops with the vintage tone system to try to make them sound more like vintage Martins. And the neck shape is uh, also a, a favorite neck shape of mine. Uh, they call it the vintage deluxe neck shape. And it really, in some respects, is the most vintage thing about those necks. If anybody's played them, they're... Uh, surprisingly low and uh, not a lot of mass behind the fretboard but they're based specifically on the 1930 om45 deluxe that martin paid an insane amount of money for 
um, at the Hank Risen auction, and uh, I think that was the auction where they got it. And I, everybody knows me, knows it's my all-time favorite guitar neck. And they based it on that. When we were at Martin in July, and I got to play that OM again, right alongside the, uh, some of the new modern deluxes, I didn't uh, remember how close it was, but they feel very similar. And that OM has a, a um, remarkably low profile for low, not in terms of the V, but low in terms of the mass behind the neck compared to a lot of vintage Martins, which is not unusual for an early 1930 OM. But, um, but the Modern Deluxe, super comfortable. And it's also asymmetrical. This is something that they discovered when they were going to make the neck shape for the authentic instrument based on that old OM. In that case, the meat is on the base side uh, all the way up the neck. There is more mass on the base side than the treble side. And the V doesn't run straight up the neck. It kind of goes off center. And so when you're, when you're, whether you're playing a modern deluxe neck or an early 1930 Martin, let's say you are playing the F shape, not the bar chord, but whatever we call the F shape, and you slide your hand up the frets, and your wrist has to turn, so the wrist eventually, the back of your wrist eventually pointing at the floor as you move up, that V stays right in the nook of your thumb all the way up. It's really quite remarkable. And the modern deluxe has that that wonderful carve to it. Uh, the biggest difference between the modern deluxe and a true vintage Martin from 1930 is it doesn't have a big 1930s heel. So it stays low all the way up until you run into, almost till you run into the body. So that's not vintage. That feels much more, when you get up in the, when you get up playing your C uh, up at the 10th fret or ninth thread or wherever that is it doesn't you know it's not big and and thick up there like it is on a vintage martin it still stays quite low and quite modern is now a good time for an interruption i have a great trivia question for y'all <laughs> certainly go ahead in what year did we see the first adjustable truss rod in the martin guitar necks we'll bring you that answer and more at the end of the show okay now back to the modern deluxe speaking of yeah because we mentioned the titanium truss rod and, uh, and nowadays they have the two-way adjustable truss rod, and which was a big improvement and was the brainchild of our friend uh, Leslie Mommelly at Martin. The Modern Deluxe has the high-performance taper except on the OM and the new 12-fret models, which have the standard taper. So when you buy an OM in the Modern Deluxe series, you're getting the, the vintage neck width. And when you buy a triple O or an a D in the Modern Deluxe series, you're getting the high performance taper. So, um, so it's a, it's a really, really cool neck. Um, and our pal, Lawrence Juber, he's now playing a one-off custom shop guitar that, that the, those people helped him design. That's got Cuban mahogany back and sides and a Swiss moon spruce top. And it's got the modern deluxe series neck. It's got the vintage deluxe profile. So that's, so big... that's his secret. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, he always played modified V's. He played the exact same uh, neck shape as your OM28 V. And his original signature model was based on the OM28 V, but with a cutaway and Adirondack spruce. But he's, you know, he's no spring chicken. And he's starting to run into the same kind of uh, fretting hand thumb joint issues that I've had for so many years. So he was going with uh, that profile and he really, really loves it. But yeah, so now that brings us to the modified V, which showed up before the V uh, vintage series. But of course, when they started putting that, that on uh, certain limited editions, and then they decided to turn that into the Vintage Series. We come to an important part about Martin necks and Martin neck shapes. There's a zillion guitars out there on the used market that have the modified V, and yet they don't all have the same neck shape. A modified V with a 1 and 11 16th inch nut feels very different than a modified V with a 1 and 3 quarter inch nut. A modified V with a 1 and 3 quarter inch nut that has a 1930s heel like you got in the in the Golden Era series feels very different from a modified V that has a modern heel. 
and they called the original Authentics uh, series, I'm sorry, before the Authentic series, when they first came out with that D18 Authentic and that D28 Authentic and 0018 Authentic, back before, you know, in the early 1900s, they called those modified Bs and they were not, you know, they didn't feel like anybody else's modified B. They were, they were much thicker and vintage -y and all that. So you have to be careful when you're looking at your modified Vs. Today, the modified V is basically on the Eric Clapton models, which is a short scale modified V. It was one of the very first guitars to get a modified V and it's still one of the most comfortable Martin X as far as I'm concerned. And then, and that's really it. Um, the other modified V necks out there have the 1930s heel. And that is the CEO seven and well, CEO nine. And I think that may be the extent of the modified V in the world today in terms of what you can buy new from a dealer at a Martin, uh, you know, a Martin display or ordering from online from somebody like Maury. I think there might be one other one. I know what I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting the signature model, the New Zealand uh, Ligertwood. I'm so sorry. What's her first name? Well, I know her first name's Brooke. I was going to say Brooke L because I can't say her last oh, name. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because her guitar is based on the Eric Clapton model that she really loves, but she's got a 111 16th inch nut. So that's fascinating because it's a short scale triple O. So it's basically got the fretboard width of the mayor, but it's got a modified V neck on the back instead of uh, the uh, low profile that the uh, John Mayer has. So uh, yeah, I, uh, sorry about that, Brooke. But, uh, but yeah, so that one is out there still as well with a modified V and the custom shop, of course, was happy to make you a modified V neck. If you order a modified V neck, if you're not careful, if you order a modified V neck as a custom order through Andrew at Maury's Music, you want to make sure you specify what kind of heel you want because the 30 style heel that you get on the CEO seven and that you got in the golden era series is a, is a rounder neck. It's cheekier, particularly in the upper frets. Some people like that. I found that neck to be very comfortable. Other people find it a little too much of a handful. And um, interestingly enough, I think the closest thing to the vintage series, one and three quarter inch neck, that I have felt in a long time, and maybe really I'll have to say this, the closest thing to the Golden Era series, since those were one and three quarter inch dreadnoughts, is the, is the D28 authentic 1937. I haven't played one in a long time. Uh, Maury and I got to play the, the new version with the new body shape at the factory last month. And that's, uh, that's a very comfortable neck and it's more like the modified V than I remember it being unlike the new D18, which is a much chunkier neck. Well, I want to give a shout out to our friend Oswald, who asked the question that I want to ask. I was going to bring up the guitar called the Martin D28 Rich Robinson, but I'd like to know, what is the barrel and heel neck? Barrel and heel. Well, the barrel is really just talking about the shape and size of the neck. It's kind of the opposite of fretboard radius, where the fretboard radius is if that fretboard continued all the way around in a perfect circle, that would be the degree, you know, that it would be 16 inches around if it's the 16 inch radius. The barrel, same sort of thing. They call it a barrel because it's really, you know, imagine if the neck shape went all the way around, then you're talking about the girth of the barrel and, the sh and then the carve of the barrel. And the heel is the shape of the heel. So on the Rich Robinson, the reason they say 1954 Rich Robinson barrel and heel, that barrel and heel was copied from his father's 1954 D28 that he inherited. And so it's unique. There's no other neck in the Martin catalog that has that exact same shape to the heel and the shape to the barrel. And that's just what we were just talking about with the modern deluxe. The fact that the modern deluxe has a shape that's very similar to a 1930 OM 45 Deluxe, but as you go up the neck, the heel is nowhere like that. And it's the combination of those two shapes that really dictate the shape of the neck because that heel 
that and if you don't know what the heel is out there that's where the neck connects to the body on a dovetail neck guitar that's the piece of the neck that comes down and curves down along the shoulders of the guitar where the neck fits in there that's the heel and that heel comes up around and how big and wide that heel is dictates the shape of the neck really all the way down in terms of those cheeks that i call them on the uh, outside you know as the shape of the neck heads toward the fretboard so where your fingers wrap around your thumb wraps around that's what they call the cheek area the shape of that is dictated really by the size of the heel and so with a 30 style heel you're going to get a rounder sort of tubbier feel to the neck which is why i caution people about make sure you order a modern heel if you're ordering custom for a modified low oval unless you want the 1930 roundness to the you know thickness to your neck so in other words the rich robinson barrel and heel uh that barrel is really thick it's almost like there's an extra inch of mahogany behind the fretboard before the neck shape starts it's a when you agree when you say that rich robinson's a handful oh i certainly would especially coming from the guitars i play a lot here at maury's music most of the time on wednesday's virtual tour that guitar did feel like it filled my hand pretty fast yeah, it's, it's, it's chunky, not so much in the fat wideness, but in the depth of the, of the barrel. And, um, but some people with big hands particularly are going to really like that a lot. You know, and then in the Authentic series, each model has a unique neck that is a close copy of a specific guitar. And the Rich Robinson is the first time they've done a signature model using that same authentic idea of it doesn't have all of the authentic bells and whistles that you get in terms of inside of the guitar. But in terms of the looks of it, it's distressed and aged. And when you open the case, it looks exactly like a 1950s D28. So if you really want uh, something that looks like an old classic D28, like, you know, some of your favorite artists were probably playing when you were growing up, uh, you get on stage with this thing and people are going to really think you have a vintage Martin. And if you uh, play that neck, you're, they, you know, if they play the neck without looking inside the sound hole to see the, to see that it's not a uh, old Martin, it's gonna. F it feels like an old Martin. It's a big handful. Um, the new D18 Authentic. I mentioned that before, uh, based on a guitar that used to be owned by James Taylor. Um, that is a, a very cheeky neck, and uh, that's a handful. But kind of in terms of the width of those cheeks compared to the where Rich Robinson, it's more about the the depth behind the neck. So you you know again, you got to be careful when you reading about next to remember that there are things that that can uh, change uh, so if you're like the modified low oval you but you want to make sure you're getting the right fretboard taper um, and if you are getting a modified V you want to make sure like I said same thing low profile I mean to me a modified V with a 111 16 inch neck is too pointy too pup tenny and kind of stabs into my hand Conversely, modified V-neck with the wider neck, when you get up the neck, it's a, more of a handful. Um, I mean, more is used to it because he plays that kind of neck all the time, but I don't anymore. So when I get those guitars in my hand, it definitely feels noticeable. Performing artists, uh, they all come with a high performance taper. So that's a pretty easy shot. And, um, and then, okay, let me just take a, a quick look through my memory banks. Um, there's got to be a joke here, but I won't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're pretty much, uh, I think you open up any of my banks and just moths fly out anymore. But uh, <laughs> but also then there's other shapes. The junior models have their own shape. And if you like the feel of the junior model, you you know, you know could conceivably get that. Uh, maybe. I don't know if they'll do that as a custom shop. That's probably not true. No, they won't. Not yet anyway. Not yet anyway. Yeah, that would make sense. But um so I think we've pretty much gone through them. You have to remember 12 strings, no matter what they claim the profile is, it's not going to feel the same as a six string because it's going to be wider. And um, their acoustic bass has its own shape. Whether they call it a low profile or modified low over or whatever, it's still got its own shape to it. So so these, these neck shapes are really more a, a generalization which is one of the reasons we're doing this, because you, you really need to pay attention to multiple factors before you can imagine in your mind what neck does that Martin actually have. Yeah, and I have a question for our listeners, a uh, two-part question. What is your favorite neck, 
And when you answer that, do you base your favorite neck more on the width, on the carve, or a combination of both? And Spoon mentioned about me a few minutes ago where I really like the modified V. And I've been quoted on the internet pretty recently, especially on some of our live programs. I do like my OM28 V and the neck that came with it. But if I were shopping again today for the guitar I'm going to use all the time, I have to be honest and say now that I've played the alternatives, part of the reason I like my OM28 V modified V neck is honestly familiarity. And I don't think I would go that way again. I think my age, the, my repetitive stress and the carpal tunnel and tendonitis fun that comes along with, with going past the 5.0, I would probably go for the uh, modern deluxe neck over it. And if I didn't have that to choose, I don't know that I would reject the neck that comes on the standard series. So again, those of you guys listening, let us know in the comments which neck you prefer. And I'll put it back to you, Spoon. When you're deciding which necks you like, I'll phrase it a different way. Is the width of the neck as important as the carve to you? Well, I went with what might be my very last custom Martin. I went with a 1 and 11 16th inch width and a low profile, but it is entirely based about my hand issues and my old football injuries and then the age, uh, my repetitive stress stuff. And um, I sometimes wish I had gone more, uh, 1 and 3 quarter, but I but with the high performance taper to keep the net, the uh, the width narrower up the neck, but um, but at the time I was playing a lot of uh, swing jazz stuff with the Paul Eucana trio, and I was thinking more in terms of Duke Ellington and Fats Waller than I was my own like finger style stuff. But I probably will stick with that neck shape. I do like the modern deluxe a lot. Um, I do like the performing artists a lot. Like I said, I, I think I had a an old fogey prejudice against the modified low oval when it first uh, took off. But nowadays, I again, I don't think about it, and I think that's a good sign, similar to what Bill in Ohio was saying. That new modern, uh, it's not new now, but the, the, uh, the high-performance neck with that modified low oval. At Martinfest, they played a bunch of them, and you forget all about the neck don't even notice it and and to me that's a sign of a great neck that there's no compromise involved uh, with that neck so um i'm going to just say to the listeners that until maybe 15 years ago you would see a model and you would be told what kind of neck it had and you played that model let's say an om 28v like maury has maury's Om 28V with the mod, um, sorry, with the modified V neck, and the standard taper, and you would have a good idea of what that was like. But all of those necks from the 1990s were still handmade. They would be rough cut by machines, but no two were exactly alike. And so that was one thing that used to drive Chris Martin crazy. Some people like that about vintage Martins that you can play, you know, 10 D28s from the 1930s, no two have uh, even remotely similar necks because different people were carving them and that sort of thing. And he wanted consistency. He wanted somebody to be able to buy an HD28 in Seattle and then buy an HD28 in Coldale, Pennsylvania, and have them feel confident that they're getting the same neck. And that really happens now. The modern technology really does allow them to have that kind of consistency. And really never before in history could you order a Martin guitar from the internet and could rest assured that you were getting the neck that you were hoping you were getting because you played your friend's guitar and it made you want to order the same model or order a guitar with that neck. That's a really good point. I remember playing your OM28V at Martin, maybe 2002 or 2003 at one of the Martin Fests, and you were commenting to somebody else that was in the conversation how you're, you were honestly surprised that your guitar got out of the factory the way it did because the neck was so thin. It was very out of spec. And I, when I took it to the factory, they, they were, couldn't believe it. And it was, but it was like, it really reminded me of a 1930 OM. So that's one of the reasons I bought it used from this guy in New Jersey. And, um, and I, when I took it to the, I took it to the factory and paid an enormous, enormous amount of money to have them recreate that neck on my very first custom guitar which I ordered through Mari's Music. It's a, a, it's a little shop in Pennsylvania 
with uh, a really excellent uh, staff and the owner really knows his stuff. So I highly recommend Marty's <laughs> music in Coldale, Pennsylvania. But uh, it was a, for all intents and purposes, an MC18GE, if there could have been such a thing, a golden era of construction, but copying that neck. And I must confess, I, I sold it for a hefty profit in uh, across the sea uh, in Europe. So so I you know, somebody made me an offer on it I couldn't refuse, and I kind of miss it. But it, I uh, turned it into a future custom shop guitar, really. But anyway, uh, nowadays that does not happen. And nowadays you can rest assured that Triple O 28 you're going to order has the neck and that, you know, all six of them, if it was still in the days when Maury, Maury's music could have uh, all six of them uh, in stock at the same time, uh, <laughs> we are going to have the same neck. And that's, that's really a, a modern technology breakthrough, I think, for modern guitars. Further to that point, if you're looking for a D18, for example, and you only have an opportunity to play your friend's D28, the same thing applies. You know you like that neck. You can take notes from anything in any series, and you might not be able to find the exact model you want, but you know you love the OM42, for example. Well, then you're going to be fine with an OM21 neck, etc., etc. So it's extremely important that Martin got that consistency. Spoon, you might not be surprised how many people call me up and they tell me, I want to buy X guitar, but the only example I know of a neck is this one. Should I be nervous? And we can frankly in this day and age, tell them, I can tell you that you know that neck so you can buy with confidence and it's a big help. Yes, yeah, so the one thing I wish that would get, will change in the future, but it probably won't, is I wish Martin would allow people, allow dealers to change the neck shape without changing the stamp. And I know they're not gonna go with it. What I wish they would do is do what other manufacturers have done and as long as it's just the neck shape and let's say neck width string space like that, to be able to call it, have the stamp say HD28 custom. And then people will say, well, what's custom about this? And you can tell them, you know, you can't, you can't put in pearl inlay around the edge of the top and still have it be an HD28. You can't change the bag size to mahogany and have it still be an HD28. But I think to be able to order a custom guitar from Mari's Music um, where you're only changing the neck shape it would be nice if they, if they, if you still could say I have an HD28, but maybe someday I will continue to quietly lobby into certain ears that keep shooing me away like I'm a gnat, but uh, maybe someday that'll happen. <laughs> but in the meantime, Andrew is certainly ha happy to order you a Martin guitar with the neck shape, the neck keel, the barrel, and the fretboard width and string spacing of your heart's desire. I agree. And, and one of these days, I'd love to get him on the program, but he has made it extremely clear. You are not to call me on a weekend. So we got to start taping this show on a weekday if we want to get him involved. <laughs> but I think he'd be a, he'd be a pretty good, uh, how, how can I say this? He'd be a character on the microphone. And I'll just leave it at that. And if you guys want to see him, let us know in the comments uh, with hashtag get Andrew on here. Uh, we'll see if we can make it work, but he's a good egg. So we'll see if we can't get him on the program sometime. But stop trying to talk me out of bringing my point back home. I have a <laughs> trivia question to answer, and you've got to play. Ah, okay, good enough. If you remember earlier, I asked you, in what year did we first see the adjustable truss rod in a Martin guitar neck? The answer is 1985. You are correct. If you could not tell from that eruption of applause, you are certainly correct. And I do have a bonus question for you and everyone listening. Name at least one of the top movies oh, from 1985. Not fair. Not fair at all. All right, let's see. I don't know if I'm old enough to remember that. Um, 1985. Go ask your older brother. I, you, you stumped me, you stumped me. Well, let's see. Um, i trying to remember where I was in 1985 and what, um, all right. 
This is a guess that I'm going to guess The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, directed by Terry Gillum. Marty doesn't know if that's true or not. <laughs> I'll be back in a little while after I research that, but I'm going to say, show me the Baron of whatever he said. <laughs> No, oh, no, I'm totally off. I just looked it up. That was 88. Totally wrong. <laughs> we would have also accepted The Goonies, Back to the Future. Oh, I almost said Back to the Future. The oh. Breakfast Club, Rocky IV, Clue. Actually, that's the only movie you mentioned that I've, I've ever seen. I've only seen Back to the Future. I've never seen Clue. I've never seen The Breakfast Club. I've never seen... What was the first one you mentioned? Goonies. The Goonies. Oh, we have yeah. to have a movie night and forget these podcasts. Yeah, I know. I've been scolded many times, usually by girlfriends, that I've never seen The Goonies. How could you say I've never seen The Goonies? But uh, You never saw Clue? I never did see Clue. No. Uh -uh. I never did. Um, oh, Laura's going to punch you square in the face when she sees you next time. <laughs> That's one of her favorite movies. I mean, she probably would never do that, but she's going to be very appalled. <laughs> I can't imagine her punching anybody in the face <laughs> other than you. But uh... <laughs> All right. Here's a movie I know you saw from 1985, and this will be a good way to close the show out. I know you know it because you act like it. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there, me and my... Uh, friends and roommates and stuff are big Pee Wee uh, Playhouse fans. So, um, which has been too long since I've seen that. So, um. well, hopefully today's show gave you some kind of an idea of the different Martin guitar neck shapes. And if this causes you to ask us which neck shape is for you, please do contact us. Support at marysmusic.com. We'd love to get into a conversation with you one on one and figure out which neck shape might most suit you best. From all of us at Maury's Music, thanks for listening. Hear you later. This has been a presentation of Maury's Music, your trusted source for Martin and Blue Ridge guitars. Find us online at maurysmusic.com. <laughs> <laughs>